yep, curtain background, so you know I'm going to have a serious conversation with y'all. I have been kind of grappling with whether or not I'm going to say anything regarding the latest involving Channel Awesome and the hashtag change the channel. Not necessarily out of any sense of loyalty to Channel Awesome or disloyalty to Channel Awesome, whichever way you view it, but because it's like, what can I add to the conversation? There's an entire 70-some page Google document out there, which I will link to in the description below, that you can read for yourself regarding many former producers and employees' testimonials regarding the negligent to abusive behavior that has been produced out of the Channel Awesome conglomerate. And I'm not here to sway your opinion either way. If you're a diehard fan or if you're a hater, I'm not really here to influence your opinion either way. I'm just throwing it out there. When you have that many um, voices congregating on a document and you start to notice patterns, recurring patterns, of the way their issues are being responded to and the way their grievances are not being met or the way that they're being mistreated. Say, for example, firing your HR uh, head a day after they've been out of major surgery without giving them a reason as to why after this person has pretty much dedicated consistently through holidays, weekends, what have you, to serving your company that's kind of suspect. I'm just throwing it out there. Nor am I saying you have to go out of your way to be bashing or boycotting Duggar Rob Walker for being possibly complicit in a lot of these issues or just being overly grossly negligent. Based on what's detailed in the document, it seems like their hands are tied, seeing as how the nostalgia critic and that guy with the glasses IP isn't even owned by them, so they're kind of at the beck and whim of the head CEO, who does sound like a major fuck up. This is more just to kind of get a lot off of my chest, because as much as I kind of deeply regret it now, I have to acknowledge, I have to be truthful and acknowledge that the whole reason I'm even here in some sort of online presence is due to the influence that that guy with the glasses or uh, the Channel Awesome content had on me back in the day. Let me take you back to 2010, I believe, when I first became privy to what the Nostalgia Critic was. I really had no clue that this character or this series existed until one day I just happened to stumble upon a review for the Nostalgia Critic. I think it was I think it was his team up episode with the cinema snob about Leprechaun or something like that. Something about that video, even though I know that people have taken on larger than life personas to get across their thoughts and opinions on culture and mass media, that's a tale as old as the hills, predating the internet. Something about viewing these two internet reviewers going over the content of Leprechaun, it, it really resonated with me. Now, I wasn't a young, impressionable teenager or anything like that at this time. I was out there in the, in the job field. I was working. I, was, I had just moved to New York City, a major metropolitan carnivation, and I was doing my best to just make it on my own in whatever field I was involved in at the time. And this just happened to be something that caught my eye and interested me as sort of a passion project. And so after kind of getting acquainted with uh, the content of the Walkers, the content of Brad Jones and other creators such as Lindsay Ellis or uh, uh, Phelous, I eventually started to produce my own video content on Blip TV. And 60 to 70% of me is very grateful that Blip TV is no longer active so that you can't see the ultimate cringe fest that was early McGTV stuff. I am not especially proud of a lot of the stuff I cranked out uh, for Blip at that time. I will admit it was a fun, cool, cathartic kind of release to get my opinions out there about certain movies or shows or music or whatever. But it was a blatant cinema snob, nostalgia critic, what have you ripoff. It was that whole, I'm going to sit here in front of the camera, 
I am going to act like the frustrated internet reviewer that I am, and I'm just going to go plot point by plot point through the movie with clips about why you should hate this as much as I do. Even though I didn't necessarily hate a lot of those movies, I just found them kind of mildly annoying or irritating at the time, I definitely played into the trope of that angry internet reviewer that the nostalgia critic definitely played a hand in influencing. So I did that for a couple years, and then I moved to YouTube because Blip was Kaputskis. I've told this story before in my Where's the Fair Use video and my monetization video, but it was a hard learning curve. It, it was adapt or die, essentially, and I'm still adapting and or dying on this site, but coming to YouTube definitely made me seriously reconsider what the context of fair use was. It definitely made me reconsider the context of my own um, approach to critiquing and approach to uh, analyzing media that I was very passionate about. And it also made me take a hard look at the inspiration or the influence I took from other creators such as the Walker Brothers. And I feel it made me evolve for the better. My subscriber count and non-monetizable status withstanding, I am more passionate and more genuine about what I discuss on the YouTube McGTV site than I ever really was in the blip days. Um, I kind of would come up with reviews or come up with video logs or come up with side content in the blip days for the sake of just kind of meeting a, meeting a personal quota. Whether I heavily invested in the product or not, I would just kind of create something and fall into that critic, nostalgia critic formula for the sake of just getting a video out there. Nowadays, I'm actually taking my time. I'm actually trying to put a little bit more effort, a little bit more creativity, a little bit more of my own unique voice into the videos I put out there, into the content I put out there, as opposed to just being a pale reflection of what something you've seen before from another creator. And I guess what I'm getting to in the root of this video log is I've outgrown awesome. I've outgrown channel awesome. That's to say, I never really was a big Channel Awesome fanboy to begin with. Like I said, I was pretty much well, my, well, my own well-established person before I was even privy to what this website was. It was just something kind of cool that I uh, found myself tuning into every week, every once in a while with a couple of producers. But now, in light of a lot of the shady stuff, the fact that there is so much and so many viewpoints from former producers and employees that really does corroborate with uh, each other very well and presents a pretty clear-cut timeline for many years of negligence, mismanagement, and abuse of power, I'm kind of glad I've really developed into my own voice at this point. Whether that's a popular voice or unpopular voice, it is my voice. I don't feel anymore beholden to characters like the Nostalgia Critic or the Cinema Snob for being here to begin with. Certainly, watching their content gave me sort of a creative kick in the pants to be like, come on, you've got something to offer. Go for it. But now, I can safely say, while I respect the work of many of those content creators, that used to be affiliated with Channel Awesome, or still may be affiliated with the uh, with the site. I definitely can take some kind of pride in the fact that I've outgrown that type of format. Don't get me wrong, if you enjoy shows like The Cinema Snob, if you enjoy Phelous at the Movies, or Brows Held High, or Renegade Cut, you go out there, you subscribe to those channels, and you follow those creators. If you feel there's something in their voice that you identify with and relate to when it comes to their opinions on um, mass media and pop culture, by all means, support them. But I just can't, in good conscience, feel like I can s support 
this website Channel Awesome which ultimately now amounts to nothing more than kind of an, an aggregate site. Like this is just where all your favorite producers will congregate and not even anymore because ever, there's been a huge mass exodus of some of my favorite content creators that I've only just been privy to in the past week because this hashtag has been filling up my feed. I had no idea that creators like Filmbrain had cut ties with Channel Awesome until this week when it was, you know, showing up as one of my recommended videos. Due to other more independent channels like Quentin Reviews throwing in their two cents about what they used to enjoy about the site, but what really doesn't work for them now, I felt like, you know what, my story with regards to my online personality or my online content is so closely tied with my affection for those early That Guy with the Glasses uh, videos. I have to basically get my frustration and get my disappointment and get my mission statement. Again, reaffirm my mission statement, what I set out to accomplish at the beginning of the year here, to just touch upon it again. I've outgrown Channel Awesome. I feel like I've outgrown it from a couple of years now. I've, I haven't really been following the actual Channel Awesome YouTube stuff for a while. Every once in a while I'll see a Nostalgia Critic video pop up in my recommended feed just because it may or may not tie into something or may have some commonality with something I'm taking a look at. I haven't really touched base with the Walkerverse of reviews. I haven't had a desire to. I've matured more as a content creator, as uh, a video producer myself, as a podcaster. That's not the sphere of influence for me anymore. I'm just gonna try different things that are more my style, more my taste, more my focus. And if they work, they work. If they don't, I'm gonna try again. And that's what I encourage all of you out there to do. If the recent controversy surrounding Channel Awesome, you feel has kind of shaken your faith or your trust in an online personality or in a YouTube channel, first of all, Reassess your priorities. Second of all, go out there and do you. Create you. Don't feel beholden again to those who came before. I might have been inspired by the Nostalgia Critic, but I don't have to be subservient to that format anymore. I don't have to owe anything to that format anymore. I feel I can grow beyond that format. Not to spite, but to inspire myself, if anything. Maybe I'm rambling, maybe I'm overcomplicating absolutely nothing, which is very likely. You just keep doing what you do, you independent video producers out there. I'll keep doing what I do. And by all means, go out there and support the voices you love to hear. Don't just support the umbrella corporation that they fall under. I came to my own decision quite a while ago, and while there's been stuff such as where's the fair use and things like that that I've supported uh, the walkers on, this is the point where I got to strike out on my own, and I'm looking forward to the journey. I hope you all are too. See you next time with more fun stuff not framed in front of a curtain.